For what purpose does the gentleman from New Mexico seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2366 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 2366, a bill to require the Secretary of the Treasury to mint coins in commemoration of the centennial of World War I. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from New Mexico, Mr. Pierce, and the gentlewoman from Wisconsin, Ms. Moore, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New Mexico. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend the remarks and include extraneous materials for the record on H.R. 2366 as amended currently under consideration. Objection. And Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman from New Mexico was recognized. Mr. Speaker, a few short weeks ago, the world marked the 96th anniversary of the signing of the peace accords between the Allied forces and Germany that ended what at the time was called the Great War. Sadly, it was only the first of what we now called World Wars because it was followed only two short decades later by the beginning of what became known as World War II. That anniversary, which America today calls Veterans Day, was for years called Armistice Day, and it still is called that across Europe. Four years from now, November the 11th, 2018, will mark the signing of that armistice. It will be 100 years since the end of that ugly, bloody war that has ushered in aerial warfare, chemical weapons, tanks, and a host of other horrors. Mr. Speaker, in the ensuing century, we have not managed to move past war. It is well that we remember its cost. For that reason, I rise in strong support of this legislation before us, H.R. 2366, introduced by the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Lamborn, along with the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Cleaver. The World War I American Veterans Centennial Commemorative Coin Act calls for the Treasury Secretary to mint and make available for sale no more than 350,000 silver coins in recognition of the centenary of the end of that war. The veterans of the Great War are long gone, the last having died nearly four years ago. It is well that we remember, though, that nearly four million Americans, men and women, served in uniform during the First World War. Half of them served overseas, and some even volunteered to fight for other Allied armies even before the U.S. entered the war in April of 1917. Of those four million veterans, even those who are not students of military history know some of the names, such as General John Joseph Pershing, known as Black Jack Pershing, who led the American Expeditionary Forces in that war and became the only general of the armies promoted to, the, to that rank while he was alive. Sergeant Alvin York, was perhaps the best known and most decorated soldier who won a Medal of Honor for leading an attack on a nest of enemy machine guns at the height of the Meuse-Argonne battles in France, capturing 32 of them and 132 enemies while killing 28. James Norman Hall, an Iowa youngster, went to France before the U.S. entered the war to fly with the American-staffed Lafayette Escadrille on the French Air Corps and later drifted to the South Seas, where he co-wrote Mutiny on the Bounty Trilogy. Mr. Speaker, the coins authorized by this legislation would be sold at a price that would recoup all cost to the taxpayers. The sale price would include a surcharge that, after requirements for raising private matching funds are met, would support the work of the World War I Centennial Commission established by the 112th Congress to plan and execute activities marking the centennial of the war. This legislation currently has 302 co-sponsors, and a companion bill introduced by Senator Blunt has 72. Mr. Speaker, while not celebrating this or any other war, I urge members to sober, soberly reflect on the horrors and tragedy of this first global conflict and to support this legislation. With that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Mexico reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise uh, to yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 2366, the World War I American Veterans Centennial Commemoration Commemorative Coin Act, introduced by Representative Doug Lamborn of Colorado's 5th Congressional District, and seek its immediate passage. Now, Mr. Speaker, as you may know, the, this summer marked the 100th anniversary of the start of World War I. The United States formally joined the war in April of 1917, 
During that time, 4.7 million Americans served, and of those brave men and women, more than 116,000 soldiers made the ultimate sacrifice. While other great conflicts, including the Civil War, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, have all been memorialized on the United States commemorative coins, there currently exists no coin to honor the brave veterans of World War I. This bill would honor their service by directing the Secretary of the Treasury to, number one, hold a competition to design the coins, and number two, mint and issue $1 silver coins in commemoration of the centennial of America's involvement in World War I. The sale of the coins will assist the World War I Centennial Commission in raising funds that will be utilized in commemorating the U.S.'s involvement in the Great War and educating a new generation of Americans about the role the United States assumed uh, in that war. I'm also pleased to report that the passage of this bill entails no net cost to taxpayers. I would urge my colleagues to join me in passing this com a common sense bipartisan bill without further delay. Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Missouri yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from New Mexico is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to uh, yield as much time as he may consume to the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Lamborn. The gentleman from Colorado is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my friend and colleague from the state of New Mexico for his leadership. I rise in support of H.R. 2366, which I introduced with the help of my colleague, Representative Emanuel Cleaver, which would require the Secretary of the Treasury to mint coins in commemoration of the centennial of World War I. The year 2018 will be the 100th anniversary of the signing of the armistice with Germany, marking the end of battlefield hostilities in World War I. During the war, more than 4 million men and women from the United States served in uniform, and more than 100,000 gave their lives. To honor their service and sacrifices, Congress created the World War I Centennial Commission in 2013 and tasked them with planning and executing activities in, to commemorate the centennial of World War I through the use of private donations and coin sales. By requiring the Secretary of the Treasury to mint coins to commemorate this centennial, this bill would allow us to honor the memory, service, and sacrifices of the brave veterans of World War I while also providing the means to pay tribute to the end of World War I battlefield hostilities. Other great conflicts, including the Civil War, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War, have all been memorialized on United States commemorative coins, but no such honor has been extended to the brave veterans of World War I. This year, 2014, as has been said, is the 100th anniversary of the start of World War I, making it a very fitting tribute that we pass the measure for this year. It is my pleasure to offer H.R. 2366. I am grateful for the opportunity to work with both Representative Emanuel Cleaver and Senator Roy Blunt on this important bill. Together, we have gathered 300 co-sponsors just in the House for this patriotic bill. It will not cause the U.S. Treasury anything, as has been said, but on a voluntary basis will actually raise money. And it's no coincidence that representatives and senators from the state of Missouri are helping on this effort. There is a wonderful memorial to World War I in Kansas City, Missouri, with an, with an adjoining museum that is a world-class museum. And for those who haven't had the opportunity to visit that museum and learn about this chapter in our nation's history, I would strongly urge them to do so. I thank Chairman Henserling and the Financial Services Committee for their support of this legislation, and I ask my colleagues to join me in honoring the brave veterans of World War I by supporting this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speak Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Colorado yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from New Mexico is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I now yield four minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Judge Poe. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for four minutes. I thank the gentleman from New Mexico. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it was called the war to end all wars. It began a hundred years ago, and after three years, World War I was a bloody stalemate. Then the American doughboys entered the bloody trenches of Europe, and the tenacious teenagers went over there to a land 
they had never seen fighting for a people they did not know. But soon after, the war turned in the favor of the Allies, and the war was over. Allied victory was declared in 1918. Millions and millions of people throughout the world had died. 116,000 Americans died. Many more thousands died when they came back to America from the Spanish flu that they got while they were overseas. The last surviving World War vet I veteran was Frank Buckles. This is a photograph of him shortly before his death. I got to know Frank Buckles before he died at the age of 110. Like I said, he was the last surviving World War I veteran from America. He lied to get into the United States Army. Uh, he was probably 15. He convinced some Army recruiter that he was 21, and they signed him up. He served in World War I after World War I was over with. World War II started, and he found out that he found himself in the Philippines. He was captured by the Japanese, put in a prisoner of war camp until World War II was over. But he came to the United States Capitol and met with many members of the House and the Senate for the sole purpose of making sure that those doughboys he fought with and died were remembered by the United States Congress. Uh, his dying wish was that those he served with would be honored by the House of Representatives and the Senate. The proceeds from the sale of the coins will be used uh, for the World War I Commission to help commemorate the sacrifices of those warriors. I was privileged to be appointed as an original member of the World War I Commission and still serve on the World War I Foundation. I want to thank uh, uh, Congressman Cleaver from uh, Missouri for all the work he has done to remember those doughboys, not only in this specific bill of getting this COIN Act passed, but the original commission that you worked on to make sure that we as an American nation remembered them. And I appreciate the work that you do in Kansas City with the first class uh, memorial that we have uh, to honor those World War I veterans. Mr. Speaker, all those that served, Every one of them that served in World War I, they're all gone. There are none left. Frank Buckles was the last one. But the United States World War I Commission will make sure we Americans remember and honor them. For the worst casualty of war is to be forgotten. And that's just the way it is. I yield back. From Texas yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from New Mexico is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself the balance of my time. Gentleman from New Mexico uh, is recognized. First of all, thanks to Mr. Cleaver and Mr. Lamborn for bringing that, uh, this bill to the floor today, and thanks for your dedicated work on that. Uh, thanks to Mr. Poe uh, around here. We just simply know him as judge, uh, but thanks for his poignant comments. Uh, as a Vietnam veteran returning to the United States in the in the 1973 era, I found a nation that was disrespectful to young men and women who had served, uh, myself included. Took my uniform off and put it in a closet, never to pull it out, uh, till I ran for Congress. And people began to ask why I didn't tell about the military story. That's something that uh, a condition and a mindset that I think that need no matter how you're registered, no matter what culture you're in, what race, what religion, we must never let this happen again. We must be willing to sacrifice for those who have sacrificed for us and those who have been willing to make the sacrifice. My grandfather was in World War I. Uh, as I was approaching my time to go to Vietnam, he visited with me about being in the Argonne Forest and about being gassed there. Uh, condition it left him with a lung condition uh, and uh, frailty throughout the rest of his life. But he never uh, was sorry for serving, never was sorry for those things that had happened to him. It's young men and women who are willing to do anything for others' freedom that we're honoring here today. And again, I would urge all to support this legislation. It's a noble concept and a noble tradition of remembering those who have served this country in the military. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Mexico yields back the balance of his time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 2366 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. 
Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds being in the affirmative. Vote. On that, I'd request a recorded vote. Does the gentleman ask for the yeas and nays? I ask for the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed.